The True Peak Meter in Levels will give you an accurate reading of how your audio will be reproduced through speakers. Now, as you can see, this particular track didn't clip the output meter, but would actually distort if played through a hi-fi system. Now, it might only be slight distortion, unnoticeable to some, but it's an easy problem to fix, and I'm sure you want your tracks to be as high quality as possible. So let me explain what True Peak means in the context of music and how it's applicable to your productions. So you create your track in Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, or any other DAW. The final master that you bounce is a digital file, and this has to be converted back to analog before we can hear it. Now, as part of this conversion, a reconstruction filter is applied to round off the stepped digital audio signal. Now, this gives us a smooth listening experience. These filters can cause slight changes in the levels of the audio. As you can see, this can be a problem for the signals that are close to zero decibels full scale and can cause clipping. A high-end digital to analog converter has headroom to compensate for this issue, but cheap speakers just won't be able to compensate for these inter-sample peaks. This means your mix won't sound distorted in the studio, but your peaks might become clipped when played through a cheap hi-fi. So inter-sample peaks mean that audio with a peak of zero decibels full scale might distort in the analog realm. So how can we avoid this inter-sample peak distortion? An immediate solution is to use a quality true peak meter to make sure your audio won't distort when converted from digital to analog. Levels will give you the information you need to leave the correct amount of headroom between the peaks of your master and zero decibels full scale. When mastering audio, it's common practice to set the limiter at zero decibels full scale and push the audio hard into it. The goal is usually to get the track sounding as loud as possible to compete with all the other very loud tracks in the charts. This approach will inevitably cause the audio to clip on most playback systems due to the digital to analog conversion. It's known that the majority of chart hits during the loudness wars have a true peak around plus one and some are as high as plus three decibels true peak. Now some argue that these intersample peaks are so unnoticeable that they don't even deserve our attention. However, intersample peaks are distorting the audio we hear, so would it not be better to master the audio with a slightly lower peak and simply remove the distortion? A good true peak meter will give you an accurate reading of your audio's peak level, and by mastering to zero decibels true peak or slightly below, you'll give your audience the best possible listening experience.